What's up, Owl fans? Welcome to the final edition of the Blue Wave Sports Show for the 2017-2018 school year. I'm LeAndre Fox. And I'm Matt Brown. This past month has been extremely eventful, and it all started back in March when FAU hired Dusty May as their ninth basketball coach. Yes, LeAndre, and I was lucky enough to be there at the official introductory press conference. Let's take a look. Just eight days after being introduced as the new athletic director, Brian White made his first hire when he signed Dusty May to a five-year contract to be the new head men's basketball coach at FAU. May, who becomes the ninth head coach in program history, comes to the Owls with over a decade of collegiate coaching experience. While White talked to nearly a dozen people about the position, he always knew Dusty May was his number one candidate. Um, but through the process, Dusty really rose to the top. Um, Dusty has been my uh, number one candidate. Um, you know, they've had, not only have they had great success at Florida, but what's even more exciting to me is the success he's had at Louisiana Tech in our conference. I was able to see it firsthand. Uh, they really had a dominant run with multiple championships at Louisiana Tech. Um, so it's exciting to me, really a separator for Dusty was the fact that not only does he know the state of Florida, but he knows how to win in our conference. May has spent the last seven seasons as an assistant under the direction of former Louisiana Tech and current Florida head men's basketball coach Mike White, who is the brother of FAU athletic director Brian White. Mike White, who was in attendance, believes May is well prepared to get his first shot at being a head coach. Integrity does things the right way. This is a long time coming. Dusty May has been ready to be a head coach for 10 years, and he'll, he'll, uh, he'll hit it out of the park. He'll be fantastic. On the first day of the job, May made it clear what goals he and his staff have for the team. Our goal is to implement a playing style that we did adapted to our personnel. We will share the ball and play with great pace and tempo. We will use all 94 feet of the, of the court defensively while play, playing a brand of basketball that will be both fun to play and exciting for our fans to watch. May takes over a team that loses four of its five starters. He will also look to turn around a program that has not produced a winning season since 2011 and has failed to reach the NCAA tournament since 2002. May could not comment on if he believes fan expectations will be high for his first year due to not knowing what the roster will look like, but he was able to provide his preconception for the season. Uh, we have assigned a player yet. I don't know who, who, uh, who, who the, what the roster is going to look like in the fall, so I, I can't comment on that. But we're going to improve. We're going to put a product on the floor that's fun to watch and, and guys playing with some passion. Reporting for the Blue Wave Sports Show, I'm Matt Brown. It seems like a great hire. Hopefully Coach May will be able to take our basketball program to the next level. But now let's check out some softball, where Matt was also lucky enough to go check out a game against North Texas. Following a 1-0 loss in extra innings, the Owls look to get the win in the second game of a doubleheader against North Texas. Things got off to a rough start though when the Mean Green got on the board early after a single to center field scored center fielder Katie Clark in the top of the first. The Owls answered back in the bottom half of the inning, first with third baseman Tatum Buckley single through the left side, which scored shortstop Emily Lockton. It then looked like Buckley got herself and her teammate, center fielder Madison Palmer, caught in a pickle. They were both able to get out of it, though, and Palmer scored to give FAU the 2-1 lead. They extended that lead to three on the very next pitch as designated player Mia Olsen hit a two-run shot to center. After another run came through, Lockton hit the Owls' second homer of the inning, this time a three-run homer to center field to take an 8-1 lead. North Texas cut into the lead in the third after second baseman Lacey Gregory single up the middle scored her sister, shortstop Lindsey Gregory, to make it an 8-2 game. Palmer's second hit of the game scored another run in the bottom of the third, extending the Owls' lead back to seven. Still trailing 9-2 in the fourth, the Mean Green were looking to score with runners on first and second with just one out. It looked like the Owls ended the threat with a double play, but it was ruled that catcher Alex Miller interfered on the swing, negating the play, and in turn loaded the bases for North Texas. Lockton made up for it though on the very next play as she caught the ball that ricocheted off Tatum Buckley's glove and dove to third for the final out before the North Texas runner could tag up officially ending the inning. 
FAU scored another run in the bottom of the fourth to go ahead by eight, heading into the fifth inning, which meant that North Texas had to score at least one run so they wouldn't end the game on a mercy rule. With the bases loaded, first baseman Riley McCauley singled through the middle made sure that wasn't going to happen yet, scoring two runs for North Texas to pull within six. Lockton led off the bottom of the fifth with a stand-up double, her second extra base hit of the game. Palmer's third hit of the game drove in Lockton to make it 11-4. With two on and two outs, first baseman Lauren Witt's blooper to center field fell just out of reach of the diving North Texas outfielder, sending the winning run home and giving the Owls the 12-4 mercy rule win. Signing off from the Blue Wave Sports Show, I'm Matt Brown. What a dominant run for our Lady Owls, Matt. Yes, it was especially impress impressive considering they were held to just three hits and no runs in the previous game. The team currently has a record of 500 overall with 23 wins and 23 losses. They're tied for third in the Conference USA. They're tied with those nasty Panthers of FIU, but they have some time. They have six more games until the Conference USA tournament that they can take it all. We now send you down to the tennis courts where Javon Kerrigan was able to see men's and women's tennis take on University of South Carolina Upstate. Our men's tennis domination against USC Upstate began here in the doubles match. Romy Chancerell and Gabriel Sidney defeat the Spartans to open up the doubles play. Next up in the doubles match features Jason Legal and Anaxio Jimenez at the overwhelming Spartans Ending their bout on a 63 score. For the women's single match, Aliana Bosova destroys her sparring opponent, Carol Sigoski, in a dominating bout of 6 0. Right after her, Jacara Gillis of FAU shows up what she's made of as she also overwhelms her opponent to end the bout in 6-0. For the men's single matches, Ignacio Jimenez destroys Ignacio Guerrero of the Spartans as he ends his bout with the scores of 6-1 and 6-2. One of the highlight plays come from this guy, Jason Legal, as he smoothly glides on the court to help his team secure the win for the Owls. Overall, our FAU men's and women's tennis team destroyed the Spartans as they both shut out the UFC Upstate Spartans 7-0. What a great showing for our two tennis programs, especially considering Jennifer Lieb and Marissa Ruiz were sent out with wins in their final home matches as Owls. I wanted to check out some tennis action myself, so I went to go see the men take on NJIT. Let's see how they did. Coming off a dominating performance against UC Upstate, the Owls are back in competition today against the NJIT Highlanders. Check it out. It's senior day here at the courts, and the Owls sent our three seniors out in a dominant fashion. Remy Chancerell, Ignacio Jimenez, and Arthur Stefani all won their final matches in paradise. Freshman Jason Legal sealed the victory for the Owls with a 6-3, 6-2 match victory. And Stefani brought his individual record to 11-4 in the closing match of the day. FAU takes this one with an official score of 7-0. The Owls travel to Jacksonville to face UNF 
before heading to the Conference USA Tournament. That looked like another dominating win. The Owls men's tennis team finished the season on a hot streak, winning seven straight games before falling in the Conference USA Championship to Old Dominion. They shouldn't be too hard on themselves, though. They finished with a record of 19-10, and 10, finishing with the second most wins overall in program history. While the women's team didn't do as well in the conference tournament, sophomore Aliana Belsova did finish her season undefeated with a record of 19-0 and is currently ranked as the number two singles player in the country. Overall, both programs have a lot to look forward to going into next season. It was great to check out the men's in their hot streak, but lucky for me, that day of excitement didn't end there. I was also able to go check out the baseball team against the Charlotte 49ers. What's up, Owl fans? Leandre here with some baseball action. After winning 5-2 yesterday, the Owls look to continue their series lead over the Charlotte 49ers. Let's check it out. The Owls needed a win here, not only to clinch the series against the 49ers, but to tie Louisiana Tech for first place in the Conference USA standings. The Owls did just that behind the arm of Vince Coletti. Coletti made his longest appearance on the mound at six and two third innings. David Miranda put the Owls in the lead, smashing two two run home runs in third and sixth innings. The Owls were stellar defensively in the early goings, with Coletti only allowing five hits and one run. Aside from the baseball action, let's take a look at the hot dog race. Just look at the speed on display. That kid is a future Owl athlete. Back inside the diamond, Charlotte clawed back to tie the game in the eighth, but a late home run gives the Owls the win, five to four. Riding on a hot streak, this win gives the Owls their sixth straight win, one away from tying their season high. That's a great win for Coach Mack and the Owls. Javon decided he wanted to get down on the action and decided to go to the very next game looking for the team to get the sweep. On a peaceful Sunday morning here in Boca Raton, the FAU men's baseball team takes on the Charlotte 49ers. This baseball season has been dominating for the Owls so far and they are now on a six game winning streak. The question now is, can they defeat the 49ers to continue that streak? What's up, FAU Owl fans? This is Javon Kerrigan here, coming to you live here from the baseball stadium. As you can see right behind me, our FAU baseball team is taking on the Charlotte 49ers in the fierce competition. Right now, we are down, but can we win? Hopefully. This is Javon Kerrigan coming to you live, logging out. The Owls came out strong, but the 49ers came out even stronger in the opening of the game, and this ending with a quick pass to second base. Then, the 49ers built more momentum at number 33, Hunter Jones, hits a high flying ball towards outfield, putting two more men on the bases. Next up, number 18, Harris Yet from the 49ers takes advantage of a loose ball as he slides in right on home base. Here, number six, Tyler Frank for the Owls. He's a nice outfielder putting him on second base. But one of the highlights of the game came right here as number 12, Diamond Johnson, hits a high line drive towards first base, which allowed the Owls to have two more players make it to home base, while Mr. Johnson himself made it all the way to third base. In the end, the Owls were able to beat the 49ers 65 in a very close, tight-knit game. 
that win completed the series sweep, which was the seventh time the Owls have done that this season. You're right, Leandre, and once I heard that, I knew I had to check out this team for myself, so I went to the very next series against UTSA. After winning their season best eighth straight game the night prior, the Owls looked to keep the momentum going in this game. With the game still tied at zero in the fifth inning, neither team had any momentum going for them until FAU center fielder Cody Wilson hit a two-run shot to right field, his eighth of the year. Still trailing by two in the eighth, UTSA second baseman Brian Arias reached first base following an error by shortstop Tyler Frank. First baseman Ben Brookover then reached first on a fielder's choice to put runners on the corners with two outs. Starting pitcher Vince Coletti got the Roadrunners to pop out to end the inning to get out of the jam. That was the end of Coletti's longest career start at FAU. He pitched eight shutout innings while striking out three. Second baseman Eric Rivera single in the bottom of the eighth scored right fielder David Miranda, giving the Owls the three-run lead. Pitcher Zach Schneider came on in relief for the ninth, looking for his 11th save of the season. Catcher Tony Beam struck out swinging for what looked to be the second out of the inning, but was able to advance to first after the wild pitch. Later in the inning with two outs, shortstop Tyler Frank's third error of the game allowed UTSA to score, making it a 3-1 game. Trailing by two with runners on the corners, designated hitter Ryan Stacey hit a double to deep right field. After the runner on third scored, the tying run was sent home, but was gunned down at home plate, ending the game and securing the Owls 3-2 win. Despite a great team effort and riding on a nine-game winning streak, the Owls unfortunately lost in their season finale. They have picked things back up, though, in their last four games with three wins and a tie. They currently have a record of 29-9-1 and, and sit at second place in the Conference USA standings. There's plenty of time left still in the season, and with 15 games left, hopefully they can carry some momentum into the postseason. Speaking of momentum, I got to see our football team in their annual spring game as they look to build off an historic season that ended in a 10-game winning streak and a 50-3 victory over Akron in the Boca Raton Bowl. For the first time in our football program's 18-year history, spring football will culminate in a traditional red versus white spring game with a steak dinner on the line. It will be a red team led by running backs head coach Kevin Smith going up against the white team led by new offensive coordinator Charlie Weiss Jr. Let's see who steps up and makes the plays that can possibly lead to a starting job heading into fall camp. Running backs coach Kevin Smith's red team is quarterback hey, Chris sure Robinson and no consists of the second team offense hey, and first team defense. Go, On the other sideline, offensive coordinator Charlie Weiss Jr.'s team was quarterbacked by DeAndre Johnson and was made up of the first team offense and second team defense. With running back Devin Singletary out of the scrimmage due to a hamstring injury, Gerald Hearns got the start in his place for the white team. Early on, though, Hearns was stripped by cornerback Shelton Lewis and linebacker Rashad Smith returned the ball inside the 20-yard line. The red team capitalized on the turnover, putting up the first points of the game on a field goal from place kicker Tyler Gailey. Now leading 10-0, running back Silver Saunders' one-yard touchdown run gave the red team a 17-point lead with less than two minutes to go in the first half. The white team were able to answer back with a run of their own as Gerald Hearns punched the ball in as time expired to make it 17-7. On the opening possession of the third quarter, quarterback DeAndre Johnson was stripped with the ball and safety Jalen Young returned it to the 25-yard line. The white team was able to capitalize on the red team's turnover once again with Tyler Gilley's second field goal of the game to go ahead 20-7. Johnson made up for the fumble later with the touchdown pass to wide receiver Jovan Durante with eight seconds remaining in the third quarter to pull within six. Still trailing 20-14 with less than two minutes remaining, the white team got the ball back for one final drive. The comeback attempt fell short, though, as Johnson's fourth down pass sailed out of bounds, giving the red team the win. Following a very close battle, the red team eventually triumphs over the white team, 20-14. The Owls kick off the regular season next fall at the Oklahoma Sooners on September 1st before coming back to Paradise to take on the Air Force Falcons on September 8th. 
Signing off from the Blue Wave Sports Show, I'm Matt Brown. I thought both teams did very well considering they spent the entire spring learning a bunch of new formations because they hired a new offensive and defensive coordinator. Yes, not to mention they hired a new offensive line coach and safeties coach, but I believe Coach Lane Kiffin will keep the team on the right track and keep the lane train chugging to more victories this next season. Well, Owl fans, our time has come. That's it for this year. For the Blue Way Sports Show, I'm LeAndre Fox. And I'm Matt Brown. Be sure to follow us at FAU Owl TV.